What's happening, sports fans? Welcome back to another episode with Mom and Papa Joe's. This is uh, part two. Was supposed to be part two of a two-part series, uh, in collaboration with James from Amon McClayman. If you remember correctly, I uh, I prepped that brisket yesterday. However, uh, it's turned into three parts. That brisket I prepped yesterday woke up this morning, and that brisket had a musty odor that I wasn't very happy with. Uh, so rather than cook it, I quickly thawed one out uh, that I had sitting in the freezer. And uh, that's the one we're going to be cooking today. It kind of pushed me back uh, in terms of time, but uh, not an issue. Uh, once again, this is a collaboration with James from Amon McClayman. I'm going to put his link in the uh, upper corner. Be sure to check James out. He's got a lot of awesome, awesome videos. He's been doing this a while. Uh, he does a lot of product reviews. Uh, he cooks on lots of different pits. Uh, awesome guy, lots of knowledge. Be sure to check his page out. If this is your first time stopping in to check out Mom and Papa Joe's, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm sure you're going to want to. You're going to see nothing but some good stuff. Without further ado, let's get started. New brisket. Been in the freezer, prepped uh, for uh, three, four months probably. It was supposed to be a comp brisket, it's the prime, but uh, after prepping, it wasn't thick enough for my comp liking, so it's just been sitting there waiting on me. Uh, nicely marbled, like I said, it's a prime, and it's got a very similar trim uh, to the one that uh, I, uh, I have tossed. My favorite binder, mustard, nice healthy amount without overdoing it. Once again, this binder, this mustard, does not bring any anything in terms of flavor to the brisket. It just simply allows your rubs to, uh, to stick. We're gonna be using two different rubs. If you count this uh, coarse black pepper, then three. This is just plain coarse uh, cracked pepper. Uh, and I love it for the additional uh, bark it helps to create. So I'm hitting the sides with a nice healthy amount. Next is going to be chupacabra. I'm the biggest fan of the chupacabra all purpose, but this one is the brisket magic. Same thing, hit the sides, pat in, Again, I'm going pretty healthy. Remember, brisket is a heavy, thick piece of meat. Smells good. And then my second seasoning layer is gonna be a sweeter, slightly sweeter, <coughs> Texas pecan from Q-Shine. It's gonna really complement and balance that boldness of the chupacabra brisket magic. It's gonna really create a nice savory end product. We're gonna give that a few minutes to, to set in, then we'll knock out the other side. I think the bottom of our brisket is ready to go. I'm not gonna flip that brisket over onto a rack. This rack is simply to make it easier for me to uh, maneuver my brisket on the pit without having to handle it directly. Starting to see some nice moisture under here, not losing any rugs. Gonna iron out any fingerprints I may have placed in here. My mustard. My cracked black pepper. 
Come back with my chupacabra. Brisket magic. And on top of that, my Q Shine Texas Pecan. It's going to provide that balance and create that savory end product. I'm going to let this sweat in. All right now, I'm getting ready to go outside and get this pit up to temperature. I start my fire with lump charcoal. Uh, a small basket full of lump. I allow that to get started. And then I will start adding mini logs. Once I see a flame on this lump, uh, I add a mini log and close the door. I just wait for my pit to hit about that 290 range. Let me walk you around the pit really quickly. A jambo is uh, arguably the best pure competition pit out there on the market. Uh, this thing is a machine, man. Doesn't require a whole lot of attention once you get her rolling. Once you figure out where she wants to run, you just gotta make sure that she doesn't run out of fire. Because if you fall asleep, that gauge, that temperature gauge will read 290 and you might be running on fumes in that firebox. I've had this thing going on three years now. And she's been good to me so far. She's a beaut. I tell people all the time, even when I don't get a walk at a cook-off, I look good doing it. <laughs> I'm running some of the best wood out there. Kiln dried, western wood, hickory and oak. What I love about western wood is that it is dry, dried to uh, the same moisture content every single time you get a bag. So it's not like you're getting uh, wood from your buddy down the street where each time uh, it's a different moisture content which can affect your cook. Once you learn how to cook with Western wood, you're going to be uh, one of the best. Absolutely. She's coming up the temp quickly. I've only closed that door about uh, three or so minutes ago and she's coming up the temp. I want her sitting right around uh, 295 to 300. That is the range. Like I said, I am warm and quick not so much uh, hot and fast. I've coined that phrase. Remember where you heard it first. Warm and quick. So our pit is up to temp. We are running right now about 295. And that's where this pit wants to, uh, loves to run. Uh, remember, this is a collaboration with James from Amon and Claimon. His link is uh, above, uh, as well as in the description below. Go check out his page, subscribe, like, you're gonna enjoy what you see there. He's doing his brisket uh, low and slow. I'm doing mine just a little uh, hotter and faster. I like to call uh, my 290 to 300 range warm and quick we're getting ready to go on once i put this on i'm not going to look at this brisket uh, for probably another hour hour and 10 minutes uh, this is my sweet spot and once again that rack allows me to simply uh, rotate this brisket as necessary all right we are at an hour and uh let's see all right i'm gonna give this a quarter turn and I'm just gonna hit it with a little I can't believe it's not butter and man you can see just in an hour how quickly that point that I left to expose has shrunk and lined up and that is what I refer to So quarter turn, 
And we will continue cooking. All right, here we are at the two hour mark. Uh, let's see what we got. The spark should be beginning to set. And uh, man, not the best looking bark. Uh, we've got set bark in several areas, but we've got uh, a weeper. Look at all that oil that has come to the top. And this will really slow down the setting of bark in these particular areas. And it's not, it's not like a liquid water type moisture. It is oil. So it's an oily brisket and it's weeping. Uh, you can see it very well in the sun. That is oil. So again, these areas, that bark is nice and set the way it should be. All right, but we've got another hour. Let's see if we can get that corrected. So I'm give it one more uh, rotate. And we're gonna let this continue cooking. The next time you see this, it should be ready uh, to wrap. So here we are at the three hour and 15 minute mark. Usually I wrap it three hours. I went a little extra trying to dry this brisket out, but uh, I even went as far as to pat it with some paper towels. But man, that oil just continues to come back and it will not allow that bark to set. That is not a problem. Uh, we're gonna continue. Uh, we've got beautiful bark everywhere else, uh, but uh, right here in the center. Why it's leaking like that, I do not know, but it's oil. Uh, I'm not gonna add any liquid to this foil simply because of how moist that bark is. Uh, I'm simply gonna come back with my chupacabra, just a little bit, especially in those wet areas. And we are going to wrap. I wrap so that I can open and check for doneness. So I wrap from the ends first. I want to wrap as tightly as possible to reduce steaming. I want this brisket to more or less braise in whatever juices it creates. Right now this brisket is right around 170. We're going to be looking at another hour and a half to two hours. Uh, we're putting this back on the pit. The pit is still running 290 to 300 degrees. All right, we are at two hours. I checked it at uh, an hour and a half and it was not ready. Uh, and again, this is how I open so I can actually see where I'm probing. And man, it probes like butter. Uh, areas you check a couple different areas uh, 210 209 and it probes nicely we're gonna call it good and uh, we're actually gonna pull this uh, for a nice rest we're gonna try to get at least an hour hour 10 minutes hour 15 minutes to rest we're pulling all right folks this brisket is head an hour and uh, almost an hour and a half of rest and one of the things I did was rest it uh, pretty much in open I knew I had a soft bark so I kind of rested it uh, open like that that sped up the uh, the cooling process as well as to let the heat of the brisket kind of dry out uh, the bark uh, the bark isn't a crusty bark it's still a little soft as I can uh, see and feel. Uh, matter of fact, you see that came up in my hand, left the bare spot. Uh, but for the most part, not the, uh, the prettiest bark I've ever, ever created. And to show you how, how much oil there is in this brisket, man, if you can see that, there's little to zero au jus, and there's just oil. I've never seen anything like that. But uh, we're gonna see what we have. Uh, let's get ready to slice this thing.
she slices just fine. Again, nice slice, uh, easy pull. Uh, well broken down. Uh, you see the honeycomb in the uh, fat between the point and the flat. Uh, nice sheen to, uh, and man, uh, that's an easy pull. Let's keep slicing. Man, really feel it. Mm. Uh, she chews like butter. Man. Uh, well cooked brisket. Like I said, the bark wasn't the best that I've ever uh, cooked. But uh, some days it's like that. Nice and beautiful slices. Uh, that fat right there just melts like butter. Uh, this just wants to fall apart. Mm -hmm. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that was it. Uh, this entire cook took about uh, five hours and 20 minutes. A little bit longer than normal, but, but again, uh, that was because I was trying to dry out that bark which never completely dried out. I want you guys to be sure to go check out James from Aim Him and Claim Him. Subscribe to his channel. He's got an awesome channel up here in that corner of your video screen. Uh, we want to thank you guys for hanging out with Mom and Papa Joe's. Uh, always remember guys and gals, we're going to give you the good shit and not the bullshit. If you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do so. Uh, we really appreciate your support. Thanks once again and uh, keep looking forward to our videos. See you next time.